Hello friends and welcome back to Generation Pixel. And today, well, just when you think you got out, they drag you back in. That's right, it's another community question and this one comes from Drinking Games with Josh and he asks, what are your most valuable games? Now, he doesn't just want to know the most valuable games you have in terms of money, but also games that are valuable to you personally. So, if you want to see my most valuable games, then just wait until after the titles. For anyone new to the channel, firstly, thank you for watching, and secondly, let me bring you up to speed a bit. You see, this channel is only about 6 or 7 months old, and at the same time as starting the channel, I also decided to collect again. So it wasn't quite from scratch, I did have a handful of games from my past, games that I would never get rid of, but it was quite a pathetic little collection that's hopefully going to grow over the course of the next few years while I do this channel. So, let's go on to the question that was posed by Josh, and that is, what are your most valuable games? And, not just valuable in terms of money, but valuable to yourself. Now Josh himself answered this question by starting off with the, the monetary value of the games that were valuable, and then moved on to the personal value. So let's stick to that format for the moment and stick with the games firstly that have more monetary value, well, monetary value at the moment. Now as I said, my collection has just started again so there's not a great deal of big hitters here, but there are a couple that I'm quite happy to have gotten a hold of quite so soon in the collection. And I'm going to start with the PlayStation 1 and Silent Hill. Silent Hill, the survival horror that everyone should have in their collection. If you're a fan of Resident Evil, then Silent Hill is your next step forward. And it's not overly pricey at the moment, but it's getting there. And obviously as the years go on, it's only going to increase in value. Secondly, another survival horror, but with light RPG, and that's Parasite Eve. Now, had this back in the day, like I did with Silent Hill, and got rid of them both. Mainly because, I'll be honest with you, I got digital copies of the games that I got rid of and I thought, why do I need the physical? Well, looking back now, I'm sort of regretting those decisions. But anyway, enough about my feelings on it. Parasite Eve 2. Again, not overly pricey, but it's a game that will rise in value and it's a game that I do love playing and I'm glad to have it back in the collection in physical. Now, a game that I've never owned before also for the PlayStation, original PlayStation, is Vagrant Story. Now, Vagrant Story is an RPG that's supposedly one of the, the best on the system, but I never played it back in the day, never owned it back in the day, but it was a must own now that I'm starting to collect again seriously. So there we have Vagrant Story. And finally, no, sorry, not finally, penultimately, we were moving on to another system in the GameCube. And we're moving on to Eternal Darkness, which is creeping up there in price, and it's one of the, the more valuable ones in terms of money in my collection. And it's a game, again, I've never owned, bought it for the first time. I got it on the world of UK Kraut Gaming, which is another fabulous channel that you should check out if you get the opportunity, and you should get the opportunity. And I'm looking forward to playing this, another maybe survival horror type, I don't know, haven't played it and that's the most exciting thing about you know getting games that you haven't played before, you can see by the smile. And finally, moving on to, well, the most modern game in this, and it's a Sly Raccoon Trilogy, the Sly Trilogy on the PlayStation 3, now quite a few of these trilogies are creeping up in price and I do own quite a number of them. I, I have the Crash Trilogy and the Prince of Persia Trilogy and Splinter Cell. So, I don't know why they go up in value. I think probably because of the ease of play, plus you've got all the games in one nice sort of collection. And they're made for HD. And not everyone is wanting to plug into a CRT or an older TV and play the original hardware and original software. And this is a good way to play those games. So probably one of the reasons that these games here are picking up in price. So there you go, that's a selection of some of the games in my collection that I've acquired recently that are worth the most in money terms at the moment anyway. 
Now the bit that I'm really looking forward to. I have picked two games. Two games from my collection that mean well a great deal to me. And the first one is going to be one that anyone who knows the channel, has been following the channel, will know this game is definitely coming up here and that is Final Fantasy VII. That's correct. Now, this isn't my original copy. No, this is my second original copy because, you know, you loan things to friends and you don't get them back. But that happens to us all. But after a month or so of not having my original copy of Final Fantasy VII, fortunately it was still back in the day and I still managed to rush out and get a new copy. And this is the Platinum, obviously, edition. Doesn't make a great deal of difference to me as I'm the only person who's ever owned this particular copy of Final Fantasy VII and it will get buried with me at the end of my life. So, Final Fantasy VII, no shocks there for the, the old school out there that know me. So the second game that's most valuable to me in my collection, we have to go back a while, we have to go back about 40 years and we have Hungry Horus on the ZX Spectrum. Now anyone who doesn't know what a ZX Spectrum is, well it's a 8-bit microcomputer and it was the gaming machine of choice back in the early 80s and all of the 80s to be honest with you, especially in good old Western Scotland where I both come from and grew up in and will probably die in. And as you can see, they came on cassette tapes, which is probably a novelty if you've never experienced a micro PC before. And this was a simple Pac-Man clone, but it was the very first game I ever owned. And again, it's a game that will never, ever, ever leave my collection. So there we go some valuable games in terms of money that I own and some games that, well, two games that mean a great deal to me personally and I will never ever get rid of them. So, thank you again for watching, thank you very much to Josh for the question and of course, if you're out there and you want to make your own video or if you just want to drop into the comments your answer to this question, then feel free, of course happy to answer any comments about anything even if you don't want to answer Josh's question you want to talk about some of the games I've shown then feel free drop it down in the comments because comments is what makes YouTube great and of course if you want to see more content like this and obviously different because anyone who knows the channel knows it's a variety of many different themes because I just can't make my mind up and stay on a true course anywhere but thank you again for watching and until next time as always Cheerio!